Welcome to Rick's Corner, where we talk wrestling, bodybuilding, and more. Hi, and welcome to Rick's Corner. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Arnold today. On the past couple of videos, I talked about Arnold's uh, chest and back routine, what we did, the sets, the reps, how it worked, what kind of development we got out of it. Then I went into his deltoid routine and how we worked L deltoids doing up the line and down the line presses and laterals. But now I'm going to talk about bicep and tricep because I know that's what you want to hear because you want to know how Arnold got those huge arms. Well, it was nothing really elaborate. That's the thing. I mean, so many people think he must have done all these elaborate moves in order to get huge biceps and thick triceps like that. But no, it was basics and basics always work. You know, when you get down to something and you start analyzing what you're doing, go back to basics and redraw your your routine again because basics are what set you off and what set you on your way to go to another plateau. Well, basically, and basics, we started out with standing dumbbell curls, together curls, not alternates. Once in a while we would do alternates, but standing dumbbell curls, four sets, maybe five sets, usually around four, eight to twelve reps, medium weight, and that worked really well. I mean, Arnold's biceps started to pump like mad. Mine did too, but I didn't have the arms he had. He was genetically pretty well gifted when it came to that. Then we'd move on and we'd do uh, a preacher bench curl uh, with the easy curl bar, which we do today as, as well, and another four sets, maybe eight to 12 reps. Then we'd go over and we'd do one-armed hanging dumbbell concentration curls, where you, you bend over and you just curl the weight without letting your, don't use the inside of your knee, just let your arm hang loose and just curl right up in front of you. It really contracts the bicep and really peaks it out. Arnold loved those. And it seems like no matter what routine we had, we always finished off with a concentration curl like that. Now, once in a while, we'd incorporate different things because you have to change your training because you get stale. So maybe instead of the standing dumbbell curls, we would do alternate dumbbell curls. Or maybe we'd start with a barbell curl, four sets, then standing alternates, then one-arm concentrations. So you have a little bit of uh, variance there where you can switch around things. Don't just add another exercise. Keep it to the three, but switch them around. Joe Weider came in one day, and he had a, a new device he called the Master Blaster, which I think is still in the market today. It's two straps that fit over your neck with a big kind of a bar across your chest with a plate, and it locks your elbows in front, and you can curl with that. So he, he wanted Arnold to try it. Arnold tried it. He liked it. I tried it. I liked it. It was a little bit uncomfortable because you're restricted, and you can't move your arms, but the idea is not to move your arms. The idea is to stay in, in, in focus where you are and curl with that weight and not let your elbows swing. It really stresses the bicep, and it was a, good, a really good product, and I do see it. I, we have it in our gym today. People are using it. Then we went to triceps starting with the basic tricep pushdowns with a cable. Everybody does them. And it's the basic exercise that really works. It adds size to your tricep. We do four sets, 12, 15 reps, really pump them up full. And then we move right over to a flat bench. I remember I did this with Ken Waller and all of myself. We had a uh, easy curl bar. We lay flat on the bench, bring the bar to the forehead and stretch it out. It's just like they call skull crushers today, which we didn't call back then. They were tricep extensions. It worked really well. But Bill Pearl had another method of those. He would bring them to the forehead for six reps, bring them behind the head for six reps, and do press outs with the same bar. That's one set. That really pumps all three heads of the triceps. So we tried that. We incorporated that as well. That's a really, really good exercise that you don't see around the gyms today. I showed a few guys where I go, and they said, oh, I've never seen that. And it works. After we finish that, we go to one arm dumbbell tricep extensions. Basic movement, maybe four sets each arm. 30 pounds, 35 pounds, and it worked, worked great. Now, Arnold never curled. I never saw him curl more than 50-pound dumbbells. He never went to the 65s. I went up to the 65s. I never saw him go over the 55 or 60 mark. He didn't have to. His biceps responded. And Dave Draper came in one day, and we were doing curls together, and he says, look, don't do so many reps on the, cur on the curls. He says, the bicep will turn into a peanut because it's a small muscle. It's two little tiny muscles, bicep, bicep, two. And when you overtrain it, it retracts like a turtle's head and becomes smaller. So you don't want to overtrain the bicep. As the tricep is three bigger heads, you can go heavier and do more on it. So remember, when you're training biceps, don't do 30 sets. Don't say, well, I didn't get a pump on 12 sets. I've got to go more and more because the more you train that, the smaller it's going to get. It's really not going to get any bigger. And I learned this way back in the 70s. You know, drop back, let your body recover, just do a few sets, stimulate the muscle. Don't kill it. But those arm routines really worked. Then we'd finish off with forearms, maybe a couple of sets of dips, and that was it. That was the arm workout, twice a week, no more. Some guys went to once a week. I don't think that's enough. I think three times a week is way too much because back in the 50s, workouts were three days a week, you know, three days on, three days off. But it's a new world today, and if you, if you separate your body parts like we did then, you can work them all six days and, and take your recovery time. 
But I wanted to stress his arm workout because people don't know. They ask me all the time, what in the world did you guys do for workouts? Tell me this. What did you eat? Where did you hang out? You know, like every morning, Arnold would honk the horn, pick me up. We go to Zuki's Deli, hamburger patty, eggs, and cottage cheese was the breakfast, and we go train. We didn't train on an empty stomach. You have to have fuel in order to burn in the gym. It's important to eat. You wouldn't drive your car around town on an empty tank, and you don't run your body on an empty tank as well. So you want to make sure you get the solid food in, something good that you can use in the gym. Today, they say a little more complex carb. Sure, I add oatmeal, or I order a wax maze, which is a complex carbohydrate drink, which actually gives me more energy to train and let the protein go back to fill the muscle. So they're all on bodybuilding.com. I get all my supplements there. They got the best products, the best prices, and they work. So I wanted just to clue you in on what we did back then. I've got other people coming in to do Rick's Corner with me. I've got Albert Beckles, who swore to me this week he'd come in Thursday or Friday and shoot this with me. Bill Grant will be here in December. We're going to do an interview with Bill Grant, Aaron Baker, Samir Banu said he'd come over, and we talk about the old days of bodybuilding down at Venice Beach. I'm telling you right now, it was the best time ever. It was an era that's gone. It saddens me when I know that so many bodybuilders today are not, no longer with us, and so many wrestlers that I started out with are no longer with us. But I'm still here to let you know what happened. Hopefully I'll be around a long time and I can bring the past forward and share with you the history of bodybuilding down at Venice Beach, training with Arnold, training with Draper, and training at the historical Gold's Gym with Joe Gold himself because there's a lot of history to be told. Now, stay tuned for the next Rick's Corner because I'll have more clues, I'll have more interesting facts, and you'll really enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned next time for another episode of Rick's Corner.